so a follow up about the fact that many of these other candidates are saying that they support Medicare for all, even if they won't necessarily define it very clearly, and they support a Green New Deal, even though the way they talk about it seems a little bit different than the way some devoted progressive environmentalists talk about it. If they say that they support the policies that Bernie Sanders does, how does he differentiate himself from them? Well, one, the first of all, he is the real thing. We got the receipts for what mm -hmm. he's standing for. That's number one. And then number two, I would challenge the voters, the electorate, the people in this country to ask the presidential candidates what they mean by that. We absolutely know what he means by that. Um, he got a question the other day about you know Medicare for all and where will people, for example, be able to keep the health care uh, that that they have or or the insurance. And he really boiled it down to this, John. It was it's not about the insurance; it's about people like their doctors, not necessarily a system. Mm -hmm. The system that leaves people underinsured, leave them uninsured. Uh, we have read stories of of people dying because they couldn't get their insulin because the cost of prescription drugs are too high. So I challenge the voters to judge the candidates that are running by not just what they say out of their mouths, but what they have stood for. And Senator Sanders has been the most consistent champion for the everyday people of all walks of life, black, brown, yellow, red, and the swirl in between than any other candidate that is running for 2020. We've got a pretty different field than we did the last time around. It's got, uh, I think we, we checked earlier today, it was at 72 candidates and probably more soon. And uh, we know that already in just the, the little bit of time since he announced the anti-Bernie online machine has, has spooled up. Um, from your point of view, considering the way things look now, what do you think are gonna be the biggest challenges for Senator Sanders uh, this time around? And John, some of those are bots too. I do want to say that because I know that the Bernie Kratz have, have you know, been picked on and maligned, and, and sometimes they fight back. But I want folks to know we need to stand up for the candidate that we're that we're that we believe in, the candidate that we have endorsed, no matter who that is, and not get sidelined on the folks that are going on the anti side. Of course, there are going to be people to challenge the senator. All of these candidates are going to be challenged. Now, whether or not the challenge is fair or not, we should mm -hmm. challenge people on positions and policies. We should be hard on the issues and soft on people. But some of the nonsense that is going on on social media, which is an artificial world that we all get caught up in, unfortunately. But we got to remind ourselves that it is the artificial world. Senator Sanders is going to continue to do what he's always done, which is to be that champion, to get out there, to talk to people face to face, to have other people. As you know, John, he he got one he asked for one million people to sign up to volunteer, and he has over a million right now. That is a strong symbol of the support that he has throughout the country. And he understands that he has to talk to the people, that it really is what the grassroots is asking for and what people need to be able to not only sustain themselves, but to live a good life. So policy for policy, the senator is very strong on that. He's going to have to go endure some things like all of the candidates will, but he is the front runner in this race. So if, if we believe that they came after him in 2016, they're going to even do it harder in 2020, which is why the senator understands and he has launched his campaign in such a way with dynamic co-chairs, mm -hmm. with uh, diverse uh, staffing at the highest levels of that campaign. But more importantly, he took it to the people. What other candidate, John, asked the people, asked for one million people to sign up and say that you want to be a part of that. Nobody else has. That is a great sign of the type of campaign that he is going to run, and we are going to win. He's going to the White House. So one more quick question, just because I was really excited to see you on the list of the, the campaign co-chairs. So I'm just curious, uh, what role do you want to play in his campaign? What, what do you want to bring to it? Well, I want to continue to touch the people, you know, even deeper than I was able to do in, in 2016. I want to go to different states across this country, help to drive the policy of the campaign. You know, that is also the role of the co-chairs. And to really not only just remind people, but to help a greater number of people to coalesce around a vision. That is really bigger than all of us, John. A vision for us today, but also a vision for the future. A vision that says that Medicare for all is an absolute right in this country. A vision that says that college for all is a right and your zip code or who your parents are or are not should not determine whether or not you can go to college or go to a trade school. One that people don't have to cut up medicine to, to decide, you know, have prescription drugs that they can't afford. One that says that living a decent life is not good enough in this country, that everybody should have the opportunity to live a good life. I am going to do that all across this country by the senator's side, by Dr. J's side, his wife. 
but also separate and apart from him, building up the masses, but to be in those rooms to help to set a policy that goes beyond this campaign. Uh, Nina Turner, as always, thank you so much for, for stopping by the show. We, we always appreciate your perspective. Thank you, John, for having me. Thank you very much for watching this clip from The Damage Report. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and ring the bell on YouTube to get notifications of our new videos. And of course, you can catch the full Damage Report live every weekday at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific on TYT Network on YouTube TV.